Bye. Hey, welcome everybody to the first annual Demo Fest. Very excited to have you all join us today from wherever you are in the world. We have over 2,500 participants registered from all over the globe. So again, welcome from whatever time zone, whatever country, hopefully none of you are up in the middle of the night, but if you are, uh, a special welcome. Hope you, hope you can uh, enjoy it, even though it's the middle of the night for you. It's, it's great to have the technology and and all of this to be able to have a community gather together from all over the earth and on this uh, first annual demo fest. So I'm really excited about this conference today. 
I've often thought of sales leaders as the forgotten heroes. Um, so my name is Garen Hess and I'm the CEO and founder of Consensus. We're organizing and hosting Consensus or uh, Demo Fest today and tomorrow. And I've had a number of roles uh, throughout my career in enterprise software and some of them have been as acting as sales engineer. And as I mentioned, I've often thought of sales engineers as, as forgotten heroes. You can't really get a deal done without sales engineers. Um, and yet the SEs rarely get a lot of recognition. And, um, and what is striking to me is how little attention has been paid in technology to sales engineers. So, you know, how many software platforms, for example, do you know of that are designed specifically for pre-sales? So just and, and compare that to the number of plat software platforms designed for uh, sales enablement targeted at BDRs or AEs. So I think that uh, this is an exciting time period because our industry and community and this profession is getting more and more recognition. Uh, finally, long overdue. So over the next two days, we have 14 experts in 17 different sessions and um, so there will be two different tracks, uh, as you should know by now. You should have a link to every single uh, track, uh, and and you can join, uh, or every single session in each track, and you can join whichever sessions that you would like. If for some reason you can't seem to find links for any specific, any given uh, session, you can always go to demofest2020.com uh, and click on any of the sessions and you'll find a uh, help, I've, I can't find my session link. Um, and so uh, if, you, if you happen to need to get in, you can't find a particular session link, just go out to the DemoFest uh, website at demofest2020.com and you can uh, find a link that will, will help you get in regardless. So, um, so with that said, I just wanna point out that uh, we have two concurrent tracks going on every hour except for the keynote. So at this hour tomorrow, we have our second keynote. And then we'll also at the end of the whole conference, we have a panel, an expert panel, and also some great giveaways. We're very excited, that'll be a lot of fun as well. So hope you can join that, those panels are always fun. So this demo fest really came out of an extension of our scaling pre-sales webinar series. And we've been trying to help bring experts to the pre-sales community. And as we thought about how, especially with the pandemic and a lot of the uh, isolation going on, that doing a virtual conference would be a great way to bring the community together. And we're so pleased to see how many of you have responded. So I'm gonna now turn the time over to John Cook, who's facilitating this session. He's going to introduce our first presenter and keynote speaker today. So I'll let you take it away, John. Thanks, Garen. So as uh, Garen said, welcome everybody out. Okay, I'm super excited to introduce our first keynote speaker. Kevin O'Brien is, uh, uh, Kevin is uh, uh, a global VP from SAP and Kevin heads up uh, a very, uh, uh, just an amazing team over at SAP. And Kevin is tasked um, with uh, reaching out to all of the pre-sales organizations at SAP, which obviously it's a massive organization, and and uh, empowering them with uh, digital pre-sales assets, and essentially kind of bringing them into uh, into the next sort of um, epic uh, epoch of uh, of, of pre-sales um, with new tools, new training, and just a really really blazing a trail in the pre-sales community. So super excited to have Kevin with us. And um, I'm gonna, uh, what, we're, what we're gonna do is we'll probably have, uh, we're gonna have Kevin do his presentation. We'll have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. And so anybody who has a question, I invite you to just kind of pipe that into the Q&A section. Um, if you look down on, on your Zoom controls for this webinar, you should see a, a Q&A section that you can just pop open and, and drop a question in there. And so, and I'll kind of be monitoring chat and sort of, uh, redirecting things over there. So Kevin, I want to turn it over to you and uh, go ahead and take it away. Well, thank you, John. Very much uh, appreciate the, uh, the kind introduction um, and uh, appreciate all the uh, work 
that everybody has done to put this demo fest together. Um, yeah, let me just get my uh, my screen sharing uh, started here, um, and uh, and confirm with you everything's working. Um, Great. But, uh, I mean, I know you personally, and I know a lot of people at Consensus have put a lot of effort into uh, putting this uh, demo fest together. Uh, and I can as say as a person who's had to do things like this, I have an appreciation of what you've done. And 2,500 people, Garen, is a lot more people than we were originally talking about. So uh, kudos to you and the team. Um, and uh, yeah, what thank I would you. like- it's, We're excited about that. Yeah, it's great stuff. <laughs> thank you. And what I would like, so the thing I'm excited about is not only the numbers that you pulled together, but uh, the fact that we've got an audience, as you mentioned, focused on pre-sales, right? That's not always that we get something like that. And it's uh, exciting to see an audience focused on the topic of pre-sales, the topic of the pre-sales organization and how do you do things better. Uh, but the biggest topic for me is really talking about pre-sales in our own uh, digital transformation. I think everybody in pre-sales for as long as they've been involved in it or been working with customers on how to transform their business in whatever industry or line of business that they're in. Uh, and it's uh, at this time that we're really taking a look inward and figuring out how do we do our own digital transformation. Uh, so exciting for me. Um, and uh, as I take a look at it, this is uh, really the theme of the entire uh, keynote I've got here, which is to talk about the uh, digital transformation of pre-sales at SAP, uh, essentially from a case study point of view. Now, the first thing I want to share when you think about transformation is it's not a holistic change. Uh, and this is one big thing that people need to consider. Uh, as if they're messaging what they're doing. It's a complementary or supplementary thing. So traditional pre-sales as we do it continues. Uh, what I'm gonna be talking about is the complementary or supplementary component of uh, pre-sales uh, called at SAP called digital pre-sales. Uh, we're known for our creativity. We spent hours trying to come up with a name uh, and that's what we came up with. Um, but if you take a look at it, digital pre-sales is one component. It comprises the entire organization. Uh, and if you look at the entire organization as a whole, the thinking behind what we did to design this is very similar to uh, if there are people out there that have worked in the retail industry. Uh, we've focused on essentially the omni-channel approach that regardless if you're doing traditional pre-sales and doing face-to-face -face meetings, whether you're doing virtual like we're doing today, or whether, whether you're doing digital pre-sales, which as we've got the definition up top here, which is the delivery of traditional pre-sales services via digital tools and assets, regardless of what channel you're working with the customer on, we wanna provide a common experience to that customer. So they consume it in the way they want, they get a common single uh, consumption experience, and that lends to uh, better satisfaction in the end. In retail, it's better satisfaction in their retail stores and in pre-sales, we expect it's much better uh, satisfaction with the delivery of pre-sales services. So as uh, John mentioned, uh, I'm gonna be going through a presentation here. It's about 30 minutes or so. We're gonna be saving about 10 or 15 minutes at the end to do Q&A. So if you do have questions, uh, please feel free to write them down, ask them at the end uh, or post them in the chat. John will collect those um, and, uh, and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. So at this point, what I wanted to do is uh, something that uh, we all in pre-sales are doing and we're talking about this common user experience. So regardless if we're in a customer meeting, we're doing virtual, we're doing digital with the intelligent demo automation, it's always important to know a little bit about your audience. Obviously, uh, the diverse audience we've got out there, we weren't able to do a deep level of discovery. So uh, what we wanted to do, and John, if you can pull up the poll here, we wanted to poll the audience uh, with four questions. Uh, the first three questions are really talking about, now we've defined what digital pre-sales is, uh, the first three questions are big topics that you need to consider 
uh, when you're rolling out digital pre-sales inside of an organization. So you, we're looking for your level of interest. It lines up to how we do the intelligent demo automation uh, with consensus. And then you have to scroll down to get the fourth one, but scroll down. And then the fourth one is a multiple choice. And it really gets into understanding the motivation of what everybody here is involved in uh, and, and why they are considering uh, digital pre-sales or doing digital pre-sales in your organization. And our hope here is with these questions, much like a uh, interactive video, we'll have a, uh, you know, Garen, John, you guys might call this uh, intelligent keynote uh, automation, meaning we're going to do a choose your own adventure as to how we cover these topics for the, the rest of the presentation. So John, maybe you can let me know when we get to the point uh, where we've had enough people answer and we can, uh, we can move forward. Great. I think we're about there. Let's check this out. I'll launch and you can have a look. All right. The good thing is we're seeing highly interested on all topics. So what this is telling me is uh, from the audience we've got out there, we'll take kind of a balanced approach uh, on the topics throughout here. And on the fourth one, John, I can't see the fourth one on my particular screen. If you could scroll up on that one. Oh, yeah, you bet. Uh, we've got uh, highest, it's, it's fairly even, but uh, speeding customer response time uh, is nosing out ahead. Okay. All right, good. All right, so we'll move forward with that. So, um, you know, as, as I mentioned, um, you know, okay, so everybody out there essentially has uh, different reasons they went out, out of, you know, about this and why they went to uh, digital pre-sales programs and, and the digital pre-sales approach. Uh, when people ask why SAP launched it, the, the uh, kind of humorous answer is it was due to an audit. <laughs> We, uh, in, in inside our own organization, we have an audit team that goes through our major organizations on a regular basis and gives an outside in view of what the organization can do better going forward. And when they did it as a, an audit on pre-sales, one of the recommendations, now this was four years ago, is we needed to focus on how to scale the organization with technology. Now we have a very large organization out there um, you know, just uh, took this quick off the website. I don't want to do too much selling on SAP. I, what I want to do is give everybody a scope of what we're dealing with. But SAP has got over 400,000 customers spread across 180 countries. We're both in the cloud. We're both on premise. Uh, pretty significant revenues. You know, a, lar a large company out there. Pre-sales organization somewhere in the neighborhood of about five to 6,000 people. Uh, but we cover 25 industries, 16 lines of business. Uh, and even with that, the number one thing in pre-sales, uh, I don't care what size your organization is. Uh, so, you know, they always say the constants in life are death and taxes. Uh, when you're dealing with pre-sales, uh, you know, the third constant is you just never have enough pre-sales experts to cover the, the demands that's out there. So our, our focus was on how to scale the organization. Now these other topics of experience uh, and others are, are, are important and we've focused on them that this is what launched us. Um, so as I mentioned, um, we launched the organization in late 2016, but before that we were doing things, uh, you know, so this is our journey on, um, on you know, going towards digital pre-sales. So in 2013, we actually started working on this scale problem and, I think this is where the audit team got their idea is we had put studios around the globe that allowed us to take experts, put them in a call center, but much like we're experiencing here from a room is to have people be in a room where they can do all kinds of whiteboarding and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, design thinking type sessions, collaboration sessions with customers remotely. Uh, and that allowed us to uh, extend the organization. But in late 2016, we started to say, we need to extend this, not from just getting more out of our people, which is virtual, but we needed to start the digital pre-sales thing. And we started with personalized video. Uh, so we went to the organization and we trained up pre-sales people on how to create their own content and share it with customers. 
Uh, and the big output of that was we got much higher engagement rates. Uh, you know, you could just see this in YouTube. If you have the opportunity to take a look at a video or an email, typically people defer to video and that's what we saw. But uh, immediately it became obvious that people didn't want to create their own, you know, videos for every single environment. So in 2018, we launched a content on demand video messaging platform that allowed us still to do a personalized video introduction. So a sales rep or a pre-sales person can do a quick intro, but then there could be a playlist of content of what they wanted to deliver. Uh, and we focused on that and that is still high use today, uh, growing exponentially now, especially in the, uh, COVID-19 world, but then in 2019, the big, you know, elephant in the room is how do we attack the demo use case? Uh, and that's where we came to intelligent demo automation uh, and consensus here is we had content, but single streaming content, people only watch it so long. And if they don't get to what they want, they tend to drop off. Um, so we started to look at technologies out there and intelligent demo automation has proven to really allow us to go much deeper into the core service pre-sales deliverers, which is delivering, uh, delivering demonstrations. So we did that and uh, lo and behold, we move forward here and you know, our learnings are uh, at SAP, one big thing we always focus on is you've got to be able to tell your story on one slide. Uh, so when people ask me, you know, what does our team do? What's our success formula? Well, I look at it like a house. Uh, and the history I showed you is we spent a lot of time in the first few years of putting a technology platform down that allowed us to deliver video. And in the early days, it was a lot about people creating their own video, kind of like a YouTube channel uh, and sending it out. Um, but then we built on top of it, if you think about streaming platforms like Netflix or whatever your favorite streaming, streaming platform out there, what, draw people, what draws people to that platform is the content. So we added a global content team. Now that global content team does not create all the content, they orchestrate across the globe of the creating of that content. But we put it into a common library organized by solution, by industry. Uh, there are certain teams that have their own and then there's an ability to cross the topics and bring it all together in this library. Uh, and that really draws people to the platform is if you keep the content fresh, people continue to come. Uh, but the, the latest thing we've been working on is it's kind of the field of dreams thinking, right? You can build it, but what makes them come uh, to the playing field? Uh, and the last part is really aligning both the assets as well as the technologies to whatever selling methodology that you have out there. So that, you know, every organization's got their own custom uh, selling approaches they take. Pre-sales has various selling approaches. Uh, in order to get this ingrained in the organization, we've spent a lot of times with those various teams trying to figure out where do we prescriptively align the um, content and the tools best in the selling process to get the, the things we're looking for. Now, one learning we had there is in this new world and when you get to digital pre-sales, it really opens up a whole new ability to work with customers. So before you have digital assets, you pretty much have to go through a process of pushing to a customer, creating sales cycles and driving organizations to that. When you introduce digital and the digital assets and the digital technologies, you're able to go really to towards more how people like uh, go to buy. And um, there are all kinds of analyst surveys out there. Now, I didn't have the rights to share them here in this presentation, but the Gartners, the Foresters, and, and many different analysts out there talk about the percentage of time that people do research before they come into your organization. And these assets can really get into the how they tend to buy approach. So as I mentioned, the first journey that we laid out is a simplify, this is a simplified version of our sales driven journey where we created assets that allowed us to create demand. We then went through the deal execution in the middle 
where we focused on first pre-meeting. So we create some assets that like if you go to a movie, you get the trailers or the teasers up front. We send out a pre-meeting before we get there. Peter Cohen is presenting after this. Um, and uh, you know he would, he would be speaking about tell, show, tell. Um, pre-meeting, before you get there, you do a tell of what your meeting's gonna be about. And as opposed to just sending out a PDF and saying, here's an agenda, uh, in a pre-meeting, you can do an introduction of your team. You can do a 30-second trailer introduction of the topics. And people are warmed up by the time you get to the meeting. Then in the me meeting, you know, as you're conducting it for certain parts of the demos, you can pull in video assets and support what you're doing if you don't have it in the demo system. And then in the post-meeting, you can comprise a message and summarize the, the big messages you had. And then finally, in Customer for Life, which is retention, which is huge in the cloud world. Um, if you're building assets on a regular basis as to what your new features are and you're sharing that with your customers, these assets can be used to retain it. So in a prescriptive selling journey, this is how we use these assets. Uh, and as I mentioned in the early going, I think we were very strong on the bookends. Uh, where, we structured, where we struggled is really replacing the meeting itself right? A single streaming video isn't very effective. We've proved it uh, in replacing a demonstration at a customer. An interactive video, much more impactful in terms of hitting what we call the uh, demo use case. But as I mentioned, the interesting thing really came about when we flipped the house. Now, you don't need to go read it. This house flipped over is exactly what I showed you before. It's just there for emphasis to say, when we went digital, it opened up a whole new way to deliver pre-sale services that we didn't have before. So customers are already used to going out on the internet, on YouTube, your corporate website, and finding assets that help them understand. If you create these assets on a regular basis in pre-sales and link them to these channels, you can keep the content fresh, you can have it being delivered by your experts, uh, and it's, uh, it's incredibly powerful. Now you can also do a sharing of this on social networks uh, and you can create what we call microsites. So if you have a particular topic and you wanna drive uh, customers to that topic on a regular basis, maybe customers in a certain industry and keep them up to date on what's going on and just share on a regular basis, here's latest releases. If you drive them to those sites, you do something incredibly important that you can't do in the world of just posting it to YouTube. And that is you control their experience. Uh, so, you know, customer goes out there and searches on whatever industry you're in or solution you're in, they'll find your technology, hopefully uh, in their search, but they'll also find the competitor's technology and they'll get recommendations maybe on their last search. And the net of it is they get distracted as they're looking for it. So if you can control these sites uh, you send the customer for and keep them engaged, you've got a much better chance of converting them to a lead, converting them to an opportunity and taking them through the whole sales cycle. And in the end, our, uh, our goal, and Garen's heard this from us before, our goal is to build assets that allow customers to come in and in a no touch approach, be able to get the video, maybe do a little chat with a chat bot or a chat with a person, maybe hit a call center person, answer them some questions, but ultimately hit a button that says, let me purchase it now. And if they can't, then we can pass off obviously to the, the high touch selling approach that we talked about. Uh, so critical opportunity that the area of digital pre-sales opened up is not only extending the services that we deliver proactively, but the services we deliver to the organization that we just get essentially free, uh, free services delivered out there. So now this is the point in the presentation where we're gonna take the choose your own adventure approach. Now I had mentioned, uh, you know, if we had, uh, you know, not so balanced, we might go, you know, might focus on one more than the other. Uh, but the net of it is we asked some questions around adoption we talked about content and we talked about analytics and I'll be getting into those particular topics which are vital topics uh, that you need to consider when you, when you get into it. So the first topic of adoption, um, I'll be honest, when we, uh, when we started this in 2016, 
it was tough. It was painful, right? So the audit team came back and said you needed to do this, but the traditional pre-sales uh, organization wasn't so excited. They're very excited to go out and transform other people's businesses. Uh, what we learned is they're not very excited to go change the way they behaved. Um, so we had to focus on ways to be able to push this rock uphill and get, you know, people talk about that, you know, the most difficult part of getting a train started is the, the first few inches. And uh, I can say the same thing with, you know, with this approach is to get it started is the most difficult thing you need to do. And I just wanted to share some messages of our learnings on how we were able to uh, overcome some of the objections we got to the digital transformation. And the first one I hit out on the beginning, which is we're not transforming the whole organization. The goal of digital pre-sales is not to replace traditional pre-sales. It's to make traditional pre-sales more effective uh, in what they do. So, uh, you know, we, we take a look at it and say, there are a lot of situations where a pre-sales person working in a cycle does a lot of low value activities, follow-ups and all of that. Uh, but the one I think really resonated with our team is uh, if you think about demonstrations you've done and you're trying to read the audience and you're trying to understand, was that demo I just delivered effective? One of the big tells is when a stakeholder in the audience says, hey, could you come back and show this to other stakeholders? And you're like, the great news on that, the, the silver lining is, you can see that they see an interest and they want to share it with others. And that's a very positive thing. The negative is you've just now earned the right to go redo the same thing you've done. And, uh, you know, go up with additional stakeholders. And before COVID-19, that might have meant you need to fly somewhere and go meet with additional stakeholders. And it's just redoing things you've done. So you can make that pre-sales person more efficient by saying, I can package up everything we've done into an interactive video. I can send it out to the audience and they can choose the particular part of the demonstration that's interesting to them. And importantly, we'll talk about later is you can get a lot of feedback back on that. So there is value for a traditional pre-sales person to allow them to be much more efficient and effective in what they do. So you, what you need to try and do is focus on removing the threat. Uh, and I was supposed to page down here and say, focus on the plus, right? It's not a replacement, it's not a minus, we're not minusing traditional pre-sales and, uh, and adding, uh, you know, uh, and, and replacing it with digital. We are doing a plus. Now the thing that got exciting to me, and I can tell you the aha moment, of when I uh, met with Rex Galbraith, uh, the sales rep who's responsible for the SAP account. I had never met him before, um, but he sent me an interactive video. And in that interactive video, I watched it and I found it of interest of what they were doing. And I sent it off to some people in our organization. As you can see on this slide, if you've worked with their technology, there's a grid that goes out, how did people answer those questions? I sent it out. And Lo and behold, Rex schedules a call with me. He was persistent um, and we got a call set up and uh, we got on the phone and he brought this up and shared with me, Kevin, this is what I've learned about your organization. So back to the know your customer. Before he and I ever met, he knew my personal interests. He knew my stakeholder group. He knew the interests of those people out there who uh, I considered people I wanted to be involved in this. And he was able to focus our conversation very effectively on what we were interested in. And I can tell you this slide alone did a lot to convince me we needed to go further. So I look at it and when I'm talking from an adoption point of view, this allows pre-sales people to now say yes to the question they've always hated and the one they've always come up with creative ways to say no. And that is when a salesperson comes to you and says, look, I got a lead and I'd like you to go out and meet with this customer and give them the standard demo. Uh, typically we're like, look, go qualify it, go out there, do some discovery, figure out if this is really real before I invest my time. Well, now with this, what you can do is say yes, you can hand them the uh, interactive demo and then per the statistics we've gotten back, if they send out an email, no cost to you, but if somebody watches it, it's 34% more likely 
that that person's going to become an opportunity. So you essentially get some free qualification. Now, if they did the Kevin O'Brien and they forwarded it out, which Rex knew, it's 81% more likely that that person's going to be uh, converting to an opportunity. So it allows you to do some qualification. It allows you to do some discovery, as you see here, on um, what's out there. And it allows you to determine uh, from a qualification point of view who to speak to. So incredibly powerful things uh, with this technology. One, extending the plus, extending what people can do. And number two is allowing them to say yes to things they traditionally had said no to. And we know pre-sales people like to say yes and satisfy the sales force. Now, the last topic I wanted to share on adoption, uh, I call it my Kodak moment. And I share this with everybody and you use it as you think appropriate. Uh, but the Kodak moment for me is more of, you know, we don't want to always get people with fear, but what people need to consider as we work with customers on digital transformation is they need to consider that this digital transformation is coming regardless if they like it or not. And I reflect back at Kodak and I say, in 1975, an employee named Steve at Kodak created the first digital camera and he patented it. He was all proud, went up to his boss and said, look at this technology I created. And the boss came back and said, Steve, I need to tell you something. And he said, Steve, we're in the film business. And they uh, immediately took that idea, the patent, they put it on the shelf. We'll roll the clock forward, taking a look at their you know, stock price here. Uh, you realize that they're not only not in the camera business, which uh, was an opportunity for them, but uh, there is no film business anymore. So sometimes, um, you know, you need to take a look at it and say, this is something that's coming and people need to, you know, take the best advantage of it and want. So now I, I share with you the first two or more of the carrot. This one's the stick, but uh, do it as you may think. Now, with all this said, uh, I've been talking about this topic for a long time. In the last few months, it's gotten a lot easier um, because driving adoption for digital pre-sales, well, when you really look at it, there's never been a better marketing effort that's been delivered for digital pre-sales than COVID-19. Now, none of us wanted this marketing campaign, but I can tell you when this struck, the people who didn't want to get involved in using what we were doing came running. And the single biggest challenge we had is going from pushing the rock up the hill to being able to prioritize who we work with and scale out the enablement as, what, as much as we can to allow people to, uh, you know, to deliver this. So um, our, uh, our uh, head of sales who holds all revenue in the entire company has said, get ready to deliver an end-to-end -end virtual and digital quarter uh, in Q2. And uh, I personally think this is gonna extend, to, you know, the world has changed forever. Uh, and these things are things we need to consider. So net net of the story with adoption, there are some stories in here you can use um, to, to, to be more effective and drive it. But uh, COVID-19, I have to be honest, has made it a lot easier. Now, the next topic I wanted to talk about is content. And I shared a little bit about this before, but I can personally say we underestimated it uh, at SAP. And when we started it, you know, we looked at it and said, look, we've got a pre-sales organization. They love technology. They love new technology, you know, uh, you know they, they, they're, they're a crust, trusted and incredible source to be able to get out there. Uh, but our quick learning is there is a huge difference between the book and the movie. Um, and uh, people who are used to delivering demos on site need some training or need, you know, in most cases need some training on how to convert from being an author and writing script and putting it in a book to writing a screenplay that you know goes out on the out on the movie screen and i kind of equate it to harry potter right the harry potter books essentially taught all my children how to read right they uh, you know jk rowling did a great job of writing books that somehow got kids to read 700 page books in a story that engrossed them and kept coming back for more and more uh, but when you go and go to the movies for those, and given my kids love that I've seen them all, um, but when you go to the movies, they're very different than the book. 
and they need to be to you know to keep the the uh, you know the people engaged. And the same thing is true with a live demo that you do at a customer site and a video that you need to put on on your platform. So pay attention to how you write the screenplay, how you handle the directing and uh, you know production of content because it's incredibly important uh, that you focus on how it's done. Um, so you need that you consider that, but then you have a lot of the other things in pre-sales. They're credible, they can be authentic. Now marketing with uh, you know out there, what we've noticed if you make very professional videos, they're not as engaging as sometimes these authentic things that pre-sales create. Uh, and that's been proven uh, by some of the analytics we've been out you know shown out there. Uh, but pre-sales people are natural storytellers. The things you need to work on is really number one and five. Help them write the screenplay and help them focus a little bit on how it's different to be an on-screen talent versus just producing a video. Uh, and then the last two really are the things my organization has focused on uh, with content is once you get to a level of volume, you really need to focus on creating a factory that has common standards, common templates, so that you can pull all this together. And when you want to bring together a consensus type interactive video, all the components look the same. Uh, and then the last thing is we talk about, we're going to be talking about analytics. Typically when people talk about analytics, they're talking about how does it link to the sales cycle? How is it effective in, in driving demand or closing deals? But there's a whole nother area of content analytics that you need to pay attention to, to understand what content is the most effective in delivering digital pre-sales services. And you'll learn based on the different content types and how they're delivered of what content you need to create in the future. So the last topic is analytics in itself, right? And this was a struggle for us, uh, you know, getting back to the change management and adoption inside the organization. But in analytics, uh, what we take a look at is how do we measure it? And I go back to the, you know, the same model, traditional pre-sales. In SAP, and I imagine everybody's different out there, but at SAP, we, we have a lot of metrics for measuring pre-sales, but a couple of the big ones are how utilized are those people, and more specifically, what is their customer facing time? There is a direct correlation between how much time a pre-sales person spends with a customer and what's the chances of uh, you know, them closing deals and getting more business. If we transition that over to the digital world and get these same kinds of concepts out there, utilization equals for us content plays. So if someone creates an asset, regardless if they use it or somebody else in marketing uses it, is used on the website or one of these microsites, they should get credit for creating that asset and getting those plays because they essentially have created a digital twin of themselves uh, and they've replicated and scaled themselves as individuals. Now the equivalent to a customer facing time is something we've named digital reach. And what digital reach really focuses on while I'm giving a meeting like this, I could have content myself that I've created that's playing on my behalf. So my customer facing time would be double, right? I'd be in front of customers now working with a customer, giving a presentation while the assets that I've created or shared, they don't have to be mine, are having an impact in a customer. So in this case, somebody's digital reach can go past 100%. A pre-sales person or a consultant can never get past 100%. So it really boils down to content plays, measure asset utilization, digital reach, measures an employee's digital pre-sales utilization. Uh, and in putting those measures in place, it helps you figure out in the organization what's been effective from content, which organizations are having the most impact in terms of using digital pre-sales and leveraging uh, digital pre-sales services, and hopefully learning best practices from those organizations and, and rolling it forward. And that really gets me to my very last point in the call to action is, uh, well, first, I hope everybody out there uh, enjoyed some of this and it gave you some ideas on what to consider when you're rolling out digital pre-sales. Uh, but my role, uh, as John mentioned in the beginning, my role in SAP 
is really about putting the franchise together, putting the global standards together and rolling it out. Now we have very, you know, a lot of different lines of business and different geographies we deploy in, and each of those behave differently. Uh, but what who we've brought uh, to tomorrow, uh, I think it's at 10 o'clock mountain time. I, I'd have to, oh, you know, t yeah, 10 a.m. It's right up here on the screen, 10 a.m. mountain time. Uh, Brian Oling, one of the best at SAP in terms of delivering uh, this digital pre-sales vision in a business unit at SAP. That business unit happens to be SAP Concur. He's speaking tomorrow uh, on this topic, and he's got a lot more detail on what he's done to execute this model and deliver it and deploy it and the value they've received at uh, SAP Concur. So I, I know these are parallel tracks, but a little sales, uh, sales pitch for Brian here. I encourage you, if you are interested in this topic, uh, to attend Brian's session tomorrow. And with that, John, I think that uh, that covers my comments. I think we've got a little bit of time left, as I mentioned, for uh, Q&A. Fantastic. All right. Thanks for that, Kevin. We've got a lot of questions pouring in. So um, I, I'll just answer one of these real quick. There, It's been uh, uh, Mark asked if the sessions are being recorded and if they'll be made available afterwards. Yes. Um, so all sessions are being recorded and we're going to post, uh, we'll initially post the links to them in our LinkedIn group and that'll be, I think we posted a link in the chat and I'll post another one in the chat sort of to, to bookend um, the session. So uh, let's see, Chris and Dave, uh, just real quick wanted to know, and of course this is my favorite question, um, Chris and Dave just wanted to know what platform you use for video delivery and demo automation. So, so we're, as you can see, we're in the second wave um, of uh, delivery right now, and Brian will speak to this. So we are using for the demo use case, as we talked about, uh, we are using consensus for the uh, intelligent demo automation and, uh, you know, the entire thing I was talking about. Uh, we purchased that. We, we had a very successful rollout last year. We've expanded the use and rolled it out globally more this year. And, um, you know, Garen, if we keep doing what we promised we'll do, I uh, expect it will continue to roll out more. Um, I will say on the back end, we have a different vendor for the actual storage of the video content and the video messaging that we've put out there. Uh, and uh, but consensus has been great integrating the two platforms so that when we pull the videos into the, del uh, you know, the demo automation system, uh, we're able to leverage the assets we created on a different platform, pull them in and then share them with customers in uh, consensus. And one thing I'll mention uh, just real briefly, uh, Kevin is, uh, if you want to learn more about just how demo automation works, obviously there's Brian Oling's session specifically inside SAP. There's also a session on uh, demo automation strategies tomorrow, uh, so you can look that up on the agenda. Very cool. Hey, uh, there's the one uh, one question here from Doug, uh, and this one is very interesting. He says, "Has SAP noticed any degradation in the client's implementation experience, particularly in the situation of no-touch sales? I'm thinking along the way of lack of discovery, wrong type of client signing contracts, implementation teams having to do kind of disco on the fly, etc." Uh, so I would say there's a lot to that question. It's a great question, and there's a lot to it. And some of it is one of the biggest things we're working on right now is to get better analytics to measure and actually be very, you know, objective and not subjective in the comments. Um, but, you know, from what we're able to measure, no, it hasn't been negative. It's been a positive. Um, and the biggest part of the positive has been that we're able to essentially capture almost like a medical record. We're able to capture a digital record of information throughout the sales cycle of what's happened. Uh, and then when we hand off the post sales or to a partner, we're able to take that information and say, here is the exact demo they shared. These are the people who saw it. This was what they were interested in. This is how many times they viewed it. Uh, and there's no confusion as to what was shared. Now, I will say SAP as a company uh, is not the most conducive to doing that just sell over the website. We have some solutions that do it, but the majority of our, our cycle is capture these, these leads, pull them into the sales cycle, handle them through 
um, this digital hub or this digital pre-sales team that delivers virtually and capture it in there and go uh, or off through a sales force. But um, it's been very effective for the handoff to services. Uh, and the other thing it's been very effective on is, uh, and we need to get better analytics on this. Some of this is, uh, you know, subjective, but we believe it's very effective in customer retention, meaning once we've signed a customer, it's free to essentially keep a list of customers who are on a particular technology and send them updates as to here's what's the latest capabilities of the product that came out in a new release that you can use. Uh, and these aren't typically things that pre-sales people are spending their time on. They're typically spending all of their time executing the new deals and the retention side of the house doesn't get the attention. So we're able to do deliver pre-sales services on customer retention and through partners uh, in ways we essentially said no to in the past. Very cool. Well, we're, we're kind of getting toward the, uh, the the end of our session, so we'll, we'll surface one or two more questions, but there are so many great questions in the, in the Q&A section, Kevin. I wonder, is there a way that people can reach out and get some of these questions answered sort of after the session? Yeah, that's a great idea. So um, yes, let's work on the process to do that, John, but I'd, I'd be happy to do that myself and Brian can probably work with you together uh, to pull that up and maybe do it through the LinkedIn group or, or whatever we're talking about. But yeah, that, that would be fine. Fantastic. All right. So um, let's go ahead and just grab. Uh, do you have th th this kind of echoes? There are several different versions of this question um, from Anupam. Do you have a separate content development team? Um, and other people are asking. So, you know, do you have the pre sales engineers doing the content? Uh, you know, how, do, how does that work? No, great, great question again. Um, and the answer is for a few years, we did not have a separate uh, con you know, content development team. And the, the word was, let's crowdsource it. Uh, and I got to be honest that, that, you know, had limited effectiveness, right? If you go and look, I, I go to my boss and say, look, Netflix spends eight to $10 billion on content. If I can get a fraction of that, you know, and build content, that'd be great. Now, I haven't been so ex successful with the boss. But what we did do is form a content team that orchestrates that, uh, that uh, creation of content. So we've got some people who are creating content. We've leveraged some external parties to create content. But the biggest thing we've done is built a factory and a process, a set of templates, and trained our organization on how to build this content uh, and put it in the library. And there's a QA process to bring it in the library and handle uh, standards, kind of like a librarian of checking things in. Uh, and that's been much more effective. So we do have a content team. Some do the development, but largely it's about orchestrating the rest of the organization, getting them trained, getting them paid, you know, pay attention to the process and templates we use to create content. Very cool. Well, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us for this session. What a fantastic start to Demo Fest. Um, I'm going uh, to throw up just a quick reminder on some of the upcoming sessions. And, um, and uh, again, if you've got, uh, there are so many great questions in the chat about implementation, about upskilling your team, um, and about the processes that kind of were in place there. Am I right in, in, in saying that Brian's session should probably cover a lot more of those, uh, a lot more of those specifics? Yeah, it certainly will, especially like in COVID-19. Man, we flipped to enablement like crazy. So um, yeah, if I can get some of these questions, maybe we could, we could prep Brian. I know he's got some content already out there, but yes, we will either do it through Brian's session or um, you know, in some other way. Very cool. All right. Well. Um, Upcoming, uh, thanks again, Kevin, what a fantastic session. And upcoming, um, we're running right up against our hard stop. So upcoming, we've got uh, on track one, we've got Peter Cohen with Seven Habits of Stunningly Successful Demos, the, the man, the legend, and, uh, and on track two, we've got story crafting for maximum results. And I've seen some of that content. It looks like it's gonna be a really great session with Mark Green. So thanks everybody for coming, um, kicking off Demo Fest with such great attendance. And um, we will talk to everybody in the next session. Oh, oh just, uh, just take note that you will need to stop this session. You'll need to exit out of this session and rejoin with the link on the next session. Also, if you're having any trouble finding a link um, in your email or, or whatever, I know that there were yeah, a lot of emails that went out. Um, 
you can you can jump on the demo fest website and within the session descriptions um, of each session there's a link that you can click on where it says hey help i can't find my link and you'll be able to get in through there so uh thanks again everybody and we'll talk to you we'll see you in the next session okay thank you